I'm Michelle at Sun and Ski, and I'm interviewing Stefan Roth of Roth Training. Uh, he's going to talk a little bit about training uh, for cycling in the off season. So uh, we're lucky to have him here. Uh, Stefan, tell me a little bit about yourself. Yeah, uh, I'm Stefan Ross. I uh, am a cycling coach. I train athletes, specifically cyclists, uh, in order to uh, have some a successful season in cycling racing mainly. But I also uh, coach regular people who like to get ready for things like Ms. 150 or a race like Palo 100. And a little bit about myself, uh, I went to school at the Western State University got my degrees in exercise physiology. Uh, along with that, I also have a uh, USA cycling coaching license, which enables me to um, coach all type of athletes who like to be, become a better cyclist. And I've been around in the cycling community in Texas for about five years. Uh, before that, I was a cyclist myself, which I still am, uh, in Germany. And I went to school in Germany for one year to go to college in the same area, sports science. And yeah, uh, I'm a full-time coach here in Austin, Texas. I work for my own business called Ross Training. And I offer coaching services, uh, performance testing, and bike fits. Awesome, very cool. Um, so uh, it's November, and uh, I know in November we've got Thanksgiving coming up, Christmas. How can uh, cyclists remain motivated through the off-season? Uh, that's a really good question. Uh, what I usually tell my clients, or cyclists in general, uh, in terms of uh, being motivated throughout uh, phases where you don't compete, which is a lot of times not easy for, for cyclists, uh, you just need to, uh, for example, you can write down your goals, what do you want to achieve for next year, that can be a certain time for individual time trial or certain mileage you like to compete in or it can be uh, uh, a certain performance you want to achieve in terms of power uh, how many watts you want to be able to execute in your time trial bike for example if you write it down and pin it somewhere on the refrigerator or if you put it somewhere where you see it every day uh, it gives you a lot of motivation and stay focused throughout the season and the off season and for holidays like Christmas and Thanksgiving, uh, you can enjoy your holidays and you can enjoy uh, Thanksgiving and associated uh, food visit. But <laughs> you just have to uh, remind yourself, you know, why you're doing that and uh, what you want to achieve next year. That way, you shouldn't run into any problem. Cool. Um, so you're you've been in a very competitive cycling. Uh, like, how have you seen, how have you prepared, and how have you seen very competitive cyclists prepare during the off season? Uh, a lot of times, people have two approaches. There's one group who says, uh, take three, four weeks off completely with any kind of exercise, just let yourself go, uh, enjoy, enjoy the off season time where you have, you know, three, four weeks where you don't do any physical activity and you recharge your batteries and you do things. Uh, you usually don't do an off season. And you don't care about so much what you eat, how much you eat, how much you train, how much you should train. Um, that's like one approach, taking off completely for like four weeks span. Uh, another approach which I favor more is uh, go ride your bike if you feel like it. Other than that, you can go on. Uh, people like to go inline skating. People like to go swimming. Uh, you can go jog on Town Lake and Austin, it's perfect. Um, but nevertheless, once you're in your off season, you should still uh, focus on what's coming up next year. So you need to slowly get back into things after taking a little, a little small break from physical activity because yes, training is always overload and recovery. And if you don't give your body enough rest after a long season, February to October, uh, you might run into problems like overtraining or lack of sleep and severe fatigue. What, approximately what month do you see the more competitive cycles and you really get back into it? Uh, pretty much that time of the year right now, beginning of November, is usually uh, where comp 
competitive athletes, no matter if it's a Cat 1 uh, cyclist who holds a license or a recreational rider who just wants to get ready for an event in February, March. Usually, beginning of November is where you get back into real training because uh, in a state like Texas, the cycling races start in February and you need two to three months to get ready for those events. So, beginning of February is when it starts and you want to be ahead of the game about three months. So. Cool. Alright, so if somebody wanted to start training in the off season, uh, are there any groups or resources that you would recommend for more competitive cyclists? And what would you recommend for somebody just sort of you know, more recreational or just getting into it? Uh, for people who are just getting into it, I think it's a social aspect of riding is really important. So I would definitely uh, recommend to do on the weekend, for example, in Austin, you have some choice between four to five group rides from either various bike shops or coffee shops rides, what we call it. And you can go there on the weekend on Saturday or Sunday morning at eight or nine o'clock. And you can ride with people your build level two hours to four hours if you like to. And I think that's really good. That's a really good way to get into the sport. Now, if you're more specific and you are looking for detailed, specific training and more intensities, and I recommend you have either a coach or you have a select group of people you ride with who are your build level and you compete too in order to get you ready for next year. So the more the more competitive the athlete is, the more specific needs to be his training in order to be successful in the next season. Which can lead to a, a lot of riding by yourself because every single individual has its own physical stats and physical ability. So group training uh, to a certain degree is good, especially for beginner athletes. But if it gets to a competitive level and you need to work on your strengths and on your weaknesses, then solitary training uh, is uh, more recommended in my opinion. Very cool. Well, thank you very much, Stefan. And uh, what is your URL? Where can people find you online? Uh, you can find me at uh, wastraining.com. That's R-O-T-H-E, training.com. Thank you very much.